around the country and around the world. We begin today's show with more on the death of Osama bin Laden, specifically the controversy over how the Obama administration used the name of the legendary Apache leader Geronimo as a secret code word for bin Laden during the raid. The decision has sparked outrage in the Native American community. In an interview with PBS NewsHour, CIA Director Leon Panetta described how the name Geronimo was used. Once those teams went into the compound, I can tell you that there was a, a time period of almost 20 or 25 minutes where we, we, you know, we really didn't know just exactly what was going on, and, and it, there were some very tense moments uh, as we were waiting for information. But finally, uh, Admiral McRaven uh, came back and said that uh, he had picked up uh, uh, the, the word Geronimo, uh, which was the code word that represented that they got bin Laden. Geronimo's great-grandson, Harlan Geronimo, said, quote, to equate Geronimo with Osama bin Laden is an unpardonable slander of Native America and its most famous leader in history. Jeff Hauser of the Fort Sill Apache tribe requested a formal apology for equating Geronimo with a mass murderer. Geronimo was an Apache leader who fought to preserve tribal lands against the United States and Mexican forces in the 19th century. He evaded capture for many years before he surrendered in 1886. He was held as a prisoner of war until his death in 1909. On Thursday, the issue became the focus of a previously scheduled Senate hearing on racist Native American stereotypes. Suzanne Sean Harjo, president of the Morning Star Institute, testified. Yes, we must start with Geronimo, the man and the leader and the person who has become a fine role model for our children all over Indian country, and for him to be compared to a terrorist and to be called an enemy is shocking really shocking that uh, this, this happened. And it wasn't just that his name was used, although that would be bad enough, uh, because that's what happens in America, is that our names are not our own. They're stolen. Our tribal names are personal names. And then we're renamed in order to <clears throat> control us, very frankly. And that's been going on for a very long time and was made official through the civilization regulations from the 1880s to the 1930s, which banned religious ceremonies, banned the Sundance and other so-called religious ceremonies, as they say, um, banned any act of a medicine man, they said a so-called medicine man, confined Native people to reservations. This was 50 years of generational religious suppression that forced a lot of the native languages and religions underground, and most of them never reemerged. certainly not as full as they had been in the past. It was in this time that Geronimo was captured and his people were prisoners of war on the Fort Sill Apache Reservation and were never permitted to go back to their territory in New Mexico. So for all that he went through and his people went through, being having every native action criminalized to now be called an enemy, Geronimo E.K.I.A., that's the stunning thing, enemy killed in action. Geronimo, enemy killed in action. Our history is very complicated, but this is our country in a way that it is no one else's country because no one brought any land here with them. This will always be our country. And so when we're slurred in public in this way, we all take offense. Suzanne Sean Harjo of the Morning Star Institute testifying before the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs. We're joined now by Winona LaDuke, Native American activist, writer. She lives and works on the White Earth Reservation in northern Minnesota. She's executive director of the group Honor the Earth. She was Ralph Nader's running mate in 1996 and 2000 presidential elections. And her new book is called The Militarization of Indian Country. She's joining us from Minneapolis. Winona, thank you so much for being with us. Let's start off by talking about 
who Geronimo was and the significance of his name being used. Let me see how The New York Times described the, mo the moment. The code name for bin Laden was Geronimo. The president and his advisers watched Leon Panetta, the CIA director, on a video screen narrating from his agency's headquarters across the Potomac River what was happening in faraway Pakistan. They've reached the target, he said. Minutes passed. We have a visual on Geronimo, he said. A few minutes later, Geronimo EKIA, enemy killed in action. There was silence in the Situation Room. Winona LaDuke, your response. <clears throat> Anin, um, you know, the reality is, is the military looks at it from its own perspective. This was uh, one of the most expensive single campaigns to find somebody, uh, bin Laden and uh, the reality was is that the Geronimo campaign, the campaign against the Apache people, was one of the most expensive wars ever waged by the United States government. You know, for 13 years, they, they, they spent millions of dollars, essentially, 5,000 soldiers, and uh, additional went after these people for, relentlessly for that long period of time. So from the military's perspective, that's a little of how they were looking at it. Um, you know, from our perspective, of course, and from, I think, all Americans' perspective, Geronimo is a hero. He's a national patriot for our peoples. And in that, it is indeed a, a, a greed and an egregious slander uh, for indigenous peoples everywhere and, and to all Americans, I believe, to equate Osama bin Laden with uh, Geronimo. Well, uh, well no, in terms of the military, this uh, seems to be a, a constant historical inability to grasp uh, the, the relationship of the government to Native American people. I, I was struck particularly by uh, during the, uh, the the wars in uh, in in, uh, in Kosovo uh, when the United States uh, used uh, constantly talked about the Apache helicopters that were leading the fight against ethnic cleansing, uh, or the 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 new helicopter that supposedly was going to be the stealth helicopter. That the that the military developed, but then had to scrap the Comanche helicopter, and uh, and there seems to be a constant uh, insensitivity uh, to the the long struggle for uh, uh, freedom and defense of their land by the Native American peoples on the part of the U.S. military. The reality is is that the military is full of uh, Native nomenclature. That's what we would call it. You got Black Hawk helicopters, Apache longbow helicopters. You got Tomahawk missiles. The term used when you leave a military base in a foreign country is to go off the reservation into Indian country. So what is that messaging that is passed on? You know, it is basically the continuation of the wars against indigenous people. Donald Rumsfeld, when he went to Fort Carson, named after the infamous Kit Carson, who, you know, was responsible for the deaths of thousands of, of Navajo people and, and their forced relocation, urged people in, the, you know, in speaking to the troops that in the global war on terror, U.S. forces from this base have lived up to the legend of Kit Carson fighting terrorists in the mountains of Afghanistan to help secure victory, and every one of you is like Kit Carson. The reality is, is that the U.S. military still has, you know, um, in individuals dressed the 7th Cavalry that went in and shock and awe. It's the same cavalry that massacred indigenous people, the Lakota people, at Wounded Knee in 1890. At, you know, that is the reality of military nomenclature and how the military basically uses Native people and Native imagery to continue its, its global war and its, its global empire practices.